Dr. Saurav Chakrabarti, working as an associate professor in the computer science group at the Chennai Mathematical Institute, Tamil Nadu. Before joining Chennai Mathematical Institute, he was a postdoctorate at the Algorithms and Complexity Department of CWI, Amsterdam, Netherlands. He was a postdoctorate at the Computer Science Department of Technion, Israel. He was awarded PhD in Computer Science from University of Chicago. His area of research is theoretical computer science. His focus has been in the classical and quantum complexity of Boolean functions, including property testing, sensitivity, block sensitivity of Boolean functions, and quantum database search in electronic commerce, in graph algorithms, and in coding theory. He has published several research papers in both national and international journals. Welcome to the UGC lecture series in computer science and the topic is algorithms. So, today we will be doing uh, applications of binary search. In the last few lectures, we have seen binary search. Today we will be seeing binary search as a recursive algorithm and then we will go into seeing binary search applications of binary search for computing square roots of an integer. So, what is binary search? Again, we have seen it uh, earlier also. Let S be a set and we want to check if a given element x is in the set S. Now, exhaustive search where you check x with all the elements in S of course, can help us to find whether x is in this set, but the number of comparisons there it can be order n which is n is the size of the number of elements in this set. But in general this is the best one can do because if the set is unsorted then no other algorithm can do better than this. But if this set is structured then depending on the structure of this set one can get some better algorithms for searching whether x is in this set s or not. For example, if the set is sorted like say if s is a is the given set s 1 to s n and it is sorted in an ascending order that is s 1 is less than s 2 is less than s 3 and so on and we have been given x and we want to search if x is in this set s then one can use binary search. Here note that we are using the fact that s 1 to s n are something like integers or alphabets or something on which there exists a total order. Thus, we can say that this is better than this or this is less than equal to this such kind of structure should be there. Not everything can be told like that. For example, if you have a set of photos there is no canonical ordering of photos and thus it can not help there. Anyway, the pseudo code of this binary search is something we have seen earlier. It is uh, the idea is to maintain a first element and the last element or L and U in such a way that anything between L and U are possible answers for possible candidates which can be equal to be X and under every while loop we either push L to the half middle or U to the middle. Thus, this difference of U minus L goes down by 2 every time and thus in log n where n is the size of the list number of steps one would be able to check whether a particular element x is in this set or not. So, this algorithm does find whether a particular element is in the set and if it exists it can output that particular element and the number of comparisons made is log n the space complexity is constant. In the last uh, lecture, we had kind of tried to argue that this can be one of the best you can imagine hope for. Now, the problem with binary search is that this search can be done only in random access memory where one can go to the middle element or whatever element that we look at in one go instead of sort searching out all of them. So, this is important. So, the data must be given in a random access memory setting like an array where we can say that it should not be that okay, give me the 
fifth element and somebody have to go and sieve through the whole set first element second element third element fourth element and then fifth element so so that would not be a quick way of doing things so for binary search this random access memory is very crucial if the data is given in something else like the linked list then binary search does not give an advantage at all as i just now told and the third important thing is that binary search is an example of recursive algorithm it's an algorithm that is kind of building on itself so this is something we have not seen in the earlier two lectures and we will see a bit more here so what is a recursive algorithm a recursive algorithm is an algorithm that calls itself with different inputs we have seen an example of recursive algorithm earlier when we did the euclid's algorithm for finding the gcd it was a recursive algorithm if you recollect so note that here uh, remember recall that the binary search we have to given the set s which is an element of s1 to sn and an element x and we have to check whether x is in this set s in the case of recursive algorithm when we design a recursive algorithm we have to add some more structure to the algorithm say for example imagine that we have been given a set s which is s1 to sn the element x and two more in indices i and j i and j are two indices anywhere between 1 and n and the uh, set is of course sorted and all now we want to check if x is not whether x is exist in s1 to sn but whether x is in this set si si plus 1 si plus 2 to sj so this is kind of telling us that here is the set or you can imagine that we have been given a book uh, library and someone has told that can you check whether this particular book is in this shelf it's kind of that kind of example where somebody has given us a start point and an end point and we want to check whether x is between the start point and end point now if we define a function like this clearly how do we check whether x is in the set s it's obvious we have to just call this particular algorithm or whatever with i equals to 1 and j equals to n and we'll get the our answer so this is a more general setting than the normal searching for an element now here is the pseudo code for this algorithm i call it bs for, for binary search we have been the inputs s x i and j and the, you may recall we have to check whether x is in the list of sets s i s i plus 1 to s j note that if i is greater than j of course the output is not there it makes no sense if i is equal to j then s if it exists must be equals to si so you just check if x is equals to si and then output you if i is equal to j and x is not equal to si then you output not there till this point everything is fine now let's see the else means i is strictly less than j in that case what we do we go for the middle which is i plus j by 2 ceiling of that and we check is x less than sm if s is less than equal to sm then we say that okay then output whatever the value comes out of the binary search s x i and m so i update the the upper limit which was initially j to m and otherwise i update the lower limit i to m plus 1 here is a pseudo code and i claim that this pseudo code is a pseudo code for binary search it does exactly the same kind of stuff as binary search does i will not prove that and i will leave it as an exercise so here are the two questions first of all formally prove the correctness of this algorithm i mean this pseudo code prove that this pseudo code does 
output the right value whether x is in this set s y to s j. And then how many comparisons are made if I make the full call binary search s x i n n. So, this was another way of looking at binary search. So, binary search till now we have looked at binary search as a algorithm which was looked a bit tricky possibly and now it looks even more trickier, but the main idea is that it is a recursive call it is calling itself we will see much more of recursive calls in the coming lectures. Now, as I pointed told you earlier binary search is very crucial for many other kind of problems particularly optimization problems. The main crucial part of this thing is that binary search basically asks only one question is x less than s m. If you look at the pseudocode of binary search it does not ask anything more than that is x less than s m. So, many times asking answering this question is easier than solving a particular problem. So, let us look at an example we have been given an integer x and we want to compute the floor of square root x. So, this symbol basically says that it is the largest integer less than square root x. How do we do it? Again a very simple answer to it is we can do an exhaustive search we can see is 1 is an answer is 2 an answer is 3 an answer, but the problem is that how do we check is i is an answer. So, if I say that I give you x equals to 53 and ask you is 7 an answer to x uh, of this answer. The only thing that you can do is that is 7 less than square root of x or in other words is 7 square which is 49 less than 53 the answer is yes, but then that is not a guarantee that that is the largest integer that is less than square root of s. So, you have to check the other direction also which is 7 plus 1 which is 8 is 8 less than square root of x and the answer will be no in this case. So, we have to kind of we can go over all the numbers 1 to possibly x and find out the square root of x. But now that we have understood binary search possibly we can do something better. The main idea is that it is not always easy to find the right value of the floor of square root of x, but what is easy is to check if a particular integer is less than square root of x. Why is it easy? Because if I have to check a is less than square root of x this is same as saying a square is strictly less than x and this is not hard to check all I need to do is multiply a with a and check is it less than x and we know that this multiplication can be done and then we can use some binary search kind of argument to find out the right value. As I pointed out in binary search what we need is just to check this inequality and nothing else. So, using that we might be able to get a better algorithm for finding square root of x. So, let us take a break now we will come back and see the rest of the algorithm. Welcome back before going for the break we were trying to find an algorithm for calculating the value of floor of square root of x which is the largest integer that is less than square root of x and we told that finding the value of floor of square root of x is not always easy, but what is easy is to check if a particular integer is less than square root of x and then we can try to use binary search kind of argument to find out the largest integer that is less than square root of x. Let us x be 31. 
and the question is what is square root of a 31 floor of that so how do we do it the first of all we start with again just in the case of binary search two options upper bound and lower bound l and u l is 1 and u is 31 this is basically the range of integers in which final answer might exist so final answer is between 1 and 31 we all know that if the integer 31 is positive so the square root must be greater than 1 and the square root must be less than itself one might be able to get a better upper bound by doing some smarter math but let's not worry about it for now now what is the next step to do next thing to check is is the middle of this remember in binary search we always go to the middle of the upper and lower bound and then make a decision what is the middle of this it's 16 and ask is 16 less than square root of 31 and the answer is no how is it no it's no because we just need to check is 16 square less than 31 16 square is something we can do easily it's a multiplication and then we just have to check if it is less than 31 or not good so this is an easy thing to do and we get no and if it is no what do we do we update we keep the lower one lower limit as 1 and upper limit as 16 so thus our searchable range goes from 1 to 31 to 1 to 16 again the next step we look between 1 and 16 and now what is the middle way between 1 and 16 it is 9 and we ask is 9 less than 31 answer is again no and thus again we update it and put l equals to 1 and u equals to 9 because we again have halved the uh, possibilities see every time we get a no it means that the upper limit is way too much and we need to push it down the next one is again the middle of this two 1 and 9 and we get to 5 and now 5 is less than 31 yes 5 square is 25 is less than 31 now we need to push the lower limit up and thus we push the lower limit up to 5 and then to 9 and again we keep on doing this one till we have the lower limit and upper limit has come to just one away l has become 5 and u has become 6 now what is the point here we did some measurements u was we started with a u that we knew cannot be the right answer 31 is way too big for a square root because 31 any num integer greater than equal to greater than 1 the square root must be less than itself so 31 was not a possible answer but 1 was a possible answer so so 1 is strictly less than or equal to the possible square root which is strictly less than 31 we kept on doing the same thing and remember that we every time we had this maintain this thing 16 is strictly greater than square root of 31 9 is strictly greater than square root of 31 and finally we got l and u and here also we got two numbers which differ by one and this l is strictly less is less than or equal to square root of 31 and u is strictly greater than square root of 31 thus here are two integers consecutive integers the lower integer is less than square root of 31 the upper integer is greater than square root of 31 thus the answer is the lower number this is because we are trying to find out the square root of 31 and the floor of that so we need to find out the exact threshold point where one integer is less than square root of 31 the other integer is greater than square root of 31 anyway so now let's see the pseudocode of this algorithm the pseudocode of algorithm is basically what we just did we had this upper bound l 
sorry the lower bound l and the upper bound u u is put as x l is put as 1 while the difference between l and u is more than 1 every time you go to the middle point if this middle point is less than or equal to x we update it to m if otherwise we uh, update the upper bound to m we need to check the termination and the correctness of this algorithm note that the main crucial part of this whole thing is if let r be the largest integer that is less than or equal to square root of x then we maintain this particular invariant throughout our pseudo code that r is greater than or equal to l and strictly less than u as i pointed out it is true in this first case because l is less is 1 1 should be less than or equal to r and x better be strictly less than r because x cannot be a square root of x and now we have to ensure that this invariant is maintained throughout this algorithm for example if we hit this if loop in that case m square is less than x and we update l to m but that means that r must be greater than or equal to m whereas in this else case when does the else occur else happens when m square is strictly greater than m if m square is strictly greater than m that means this r must be strictly lesser less than m and we update it to u so after this else loop also x is strictly less than u so this invariant is maintained throughout this pseudo code and thus we have that uh, this process will always be maintained and when l becomes u minus 1 in that case r must be equals to u l because r cannot be equals to u it is strictly less than u so we have l equals to r and we output the l so this also this also proves that it is a termination as well as the correctness of this algorithm the running time this is very similar to the one for binary search every time we have re reduced the distance between l u and l by 2 u minus l goes to l minus u every time and the number of multiplications done okay here what have we done the number of steps or in other words is basically depend on the multiplication because we are all that we are doing is other than some small set of of register building like this and this the main work is happening here basically checking this particular part where we are checking is m square less than x and it is the multiplication that matters so the number of multiplications done here is the number of rounds this while loop goes which is log x now the input size is the size of x which is the number of bits required to uh, specify x so which is log x the run time is log x number of multiplications so this is where we have to be careful sometimes when we talk about algorithms if somebody comes and says that see here is a box or a machine where you put in two numbers and in one go it outputs the product of these two numbers then the it is great this says that the number of times i need to press the machine is log x because there all we have to count is log x number of multiplications each multiplication takes one step but when a computer does it a multiplication need not be done in one step and it can take some more time so every time we are giving two in numbers rather we are giving one number when we are squaring it this number is any number between 1 and x so it's an integer of size log x so we are multiplying two log x bit integers 
and it depends upon how good a multiplication algorithm I have and depending on that we can talk about the runtime of this algorithm. The runtime will be log x times the cost or the run the time required to multiply two log x bits algorithms. To summarize binary search we have looked at binary search as a recursive algorithm. We have seen binary search earlier and we have seen many as, uh, aspects of binary search and here today we saw that how one can formulate binary search as a recursive algorithm also. Then we saw that binary search kind of a idea can be used for various things for example computing the square root of an integer. Here I need to tell you that this was just one example where we found out the square root of an integer. One can try to, to use it for various other optimization problems under the same setting that all we need to check is if the value that we are looking for is less than some x. We will see much more of this kind of approach to find out the right value in coming lectures. So, here are some questions. So, write down the pseudocode for finding not the floor of square root of x, but the ceiling of square root of x or in other words the integer the smallest integer that is bigger than square root of x. Also the next question is what happens if I ask you to compute the floor of fifth root of x can you do something similar. So, if m is the amount of time required to multiply two log x bit integers what is the run time for computing the fifth root of x. Also write down the pseudo code for finding the fifth root of x. So, this kind of brings to our end of immediate applications of binary search. In the coming lectures we will see many more of this binary search which will be hidden as a sub uh, algorithm in a bigger algorithm. Um, in the next lecture we will see much more of recursive algorithms also as we have seen the case of binary search. Thank you.